Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So in a video that I did a few months ago, I was going over how the angle sensor, which is the sleep sensor, our newer MacBooks, require calibration. And that calibration tool is only made available by Apple to Apple authorized service providers if you are looking to have a repair shop fix your device. So what I went over in this video is if you want that repair, I can no longer just replace your corroded sleep sensor. What I need to do is I need to actually fix your old one, which means that I have to go there and uh, scrape the corroded one off the board and try to make that one work because it requires calibration. Now some have argued that this is being done for security and one of the things that I find funniest about this is the way that the security feature is implemented. So you would want it to be that if somebody installed a faulty sleep sensor that your device would probably go to sleep all the time. I don't know what sleep sensor has been installed. Therefore, since I don't have a calibrated sleep sensor and I don't want the microphone to be on when the computer is closed, I'm going to have the computer be asleep all the time. No, the best part is it does the exact opposite of that, which is if you install a sleep sensor that's not calibrated, for your security, the machine doesn't go to sleep. The best part of this is that these modern machines, they do not have the see-through Apple that the older ones did so that you can actually see if it's on or not. You may actually not even know that the computer is still on and thereby able to record you when the device is closed, when the, a non-calibrated sleep sensor is installed. So this really just, in my opinion, again, I'm not a security expert and those who are, please do correct me. It doesn't really seem to make sense as a, as a security issue. It just seems to be a, one of those things that's just one of many things that makes our life harder. Now, we have come up with a new solution here, and I'd like to introduce my good friend here, who has come up with a tool to fix this. So in the past, again, what we would have to do is we would have to actually go on the board and try and fix the old sleep sensor, which requires that the old one be in good enough condition that we can scrape away and try to scrape away all the corrosion and put it back on properly. But now we have a tool over here that actually allows us to calibrate the sleep sensor properly. So so can you just introduce yourself to everybody here? What's your name? Uh, what do you do? And uh, how'd you come up with this awesome little tool? Yeah, thank you, Louis, for introdu introducing me. I'm Steve. I'm uh, from Germany. And I also own a repair shop in Germany. And so we are also facing the problem of replacing the display angle sensor with sensors we could buy in China. But as you already told, they are not working because they are not calibrated. And uh, as I'm a little bit a tinker, I was thinking about how this could be fixed. And then I was tinkering around a bit with Arduino and so on. And finally, we found a solution. After doing some research and build a first prototype, I got some people who really know what they are doing and not just tinkering around like me. And uh, then we got this second prototype, which is called the Nerd Tool One. And so I'm very happy to uh, today demonstrate how this is working. So I think we can start directly by having a look at this MacBook Pro. Uh, it has a corroded display angle sensor, which we had already replaced. So this is the old one. And we already installed a new display angle sensor in the MacBook. So let me switch to the overhead. It's over here. OK. So as you see, it is already installed and plugged in, but it's not calibrated yet. So I will show you the problem which we are facing if we install an uncalibrated sensor. As you see, hope it boots up and it should normally go into the system as I don't have plugged in the battery, it, the fan will spin high. But that's no problem. And as soon as it's booted, and if I now close the lid, and I hope we can capture it on camera. Uh, don't you know if you can see it? Yeah, you can see the screen is still on. It's still on. And it will not turn off, even if I fully close it. The fans still are blowing, and it doesn't go to sleep. So let's try to change this. Let's try to calibrate the sensor. Therefore, I'll shut it down. Just unplug the 
power supply and then we will take the Nerd Tool 1. The Nerd Tool 1 uh, has two connectors on it, one for all MacBook Pros and one for the MacBook Air. It has two buttons which we need to control the tool and three LEDs. What these LEDs are for I will show you in a minute. So let me quickly connect the Oh yeah, that's thank you. So as you see, I've connected the sensor directly to the Nertool 1. And as soon as I power it up with a normal power supply, 5 volt, two LEDs should shine. The LED 2 should flash like this. It just indicates that the controller is working. If it doesn't flash, then simply unplug and re connected and the second LED this is one is more interesting because it shows us that the uh, sensor is not calibrated yet um, this LED should shine like uh, it's doing now as soon as the lid is open but it is closed so it's not calibrated it sh the LED should uh, be off in this state and to calibrate it now we simply have to press switch number one. The LED one will start to flash because the nerd tool is now trying to get data from the uh, sensor. And as soon as it stops flashing, LED ND is getting off. So now the sensor thinks that the lid is closed and it is closed. So the calibration is done. But if we unplug it now, um, we haven't saved the data back into the, um, into the chip and we have to do this all again. So the second thing we need to do is to press the second button. Both LEDs will flash once. And now if LED is steady, the whole process should be done. So we can unplug the tool, unplug the sensor reconnect it to the board like this and power the MacBook up and now here comes the interesting part <laughs> suspense so the sensor is now calibrated that it should turn off if uh, the angle is less than five degrees. Focus camera. Focus. What is it that AVE always says that gets the camera to focus? Focus, please. But even it's not that important because I hope we will see the light from the screen. So as you see, now it's on and hopefully it will, yeah, did you see? Lewis, can you it confirm? It flashed off. And even if we open it up again. It's on? It's on. Okay, this is admittedly really hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis is not a paid actor, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am a paid actor. <laughs> it did it once. It did, <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> now get it to do it again. Let's have a look. <laughs> there. Okay, did it, it again? Yeah, maybe it's because it's the battery is not plugged in, but it's off and it's on again. Maybe if I, I'm going to adjust the that ISO on the camera. Have you, have you seen it? <laughs> We're going <laughs> to adjust the ISO a little bit to make it a little bit more obvious. Yeah. That okay, dramatic reenactment <laughs> with ISO 33200. Dramatic okay. reenactment. On. All right. And off. Okay, there you go. Yeah, you see it a lot more with a higher ISO. Yeah. Thank you for this. Yeah, and that's, that's basically it. The sensor is calibrated. And uh, the MacBook should go to sleep normally like it did with an original MacBook um, display angle sensor. You're still going to have some people that you'll fake. I guarantee you. <laughs> fuck them all. I don't, I, don't, I don't give a fuck what they think. I care that like, you, you don't have to scrape the chip anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is for me. Well, admittedly, this is for Chris. Who am I kidding? Thank you. How do you feel about never having to scrape away at an old angle sensor again to try to get to the bond wire and cut it out so you can solder it to a broken flex cable? I don't even know how to tell it. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Uh, <laughs> you're so kind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And to whoever it is that works at Apple that decided to not make this available to technicians, <laughs> we win. There's one thing I want to add to this before I finish today's video. Uh, there are a lot of people on the internet that were saying that this calibration tool being made available to independents would have been a security risk. And since it would be a security risk, it would make the device less secure for the user if an independent or random person were able to calibrate the sleep sensor. That's why you don't have access to it, Lewis. And there's a few things that I want to say there. Either this is true or it isn't. And either way, it's horrible. If it is true that there are serious security implications in us being able to get access to the sleep sensor calibration tool, that means that one dude in his bedroom in Germany who's tinkering around managed to defeat the security features of a $2 trillion company's products. That's bad. Or behind door number two, this really doesn't have much to do with security at all. And it's just one of those things where they just don't care if the decisions that they make on how to do these oddball machine designs result in them being less repairable for people like us when we want to fix a very, very, very common issue on these newer MacBooks that a lot of customers are coming in with. Either way, it really looks bad. Again, if this is for security, that dude just defeated it with a tool that you'll be able to find at the link down below. Um, or it wasn't about security all along. And it's just one of those things that makes it harder for us for no good reason. And this is why we push forward for right to repair is that, uh, again, up until this point, up until somebody figures this out and breaks and breaks the code here, you are really like you're, you're taking chips off of broken flex cables. And we are filing the flex cable to try to get to a trace. And we're filing the chip to try to see if we can find a bond wire. And that's, again, to the people we were not able to do that for in the past, they all got told, sorry, you got to go to Apple and pay over a thousand bucks for a repair. Uh, for the people that came before this tool that we weren't able to help, it's, it's a lot of waste. It's a lot of people that were paying higher repair bills for no good reason because a company decided to not make a tool available to all of us. And all we want to do at the end of the day is we want to be able to service the customers that the manufacturer is not interested in servicing in an economically viable way so that they can be happier with their device and therefore have a greater and higher overall opinion of that manufacturer's products as they continue to use them. And we have to jump over hurdles like this. And we, there are a lot of people that will say, Lewis, why do you only specialize in dealing with one brand of products? Why don't you deal with every brand of products? If you need to take several years of time to try and reverse engineer a design just to replace a sleep sensor, no, we're not talking about every other part in this machine that's a mess, just the sleep sensor. How are you going to work on every device from every company that comes in. You need to find leaked documentation that's not available anywhere. You need to find parts that are not available anywhere. After finding the parts that are not available anywhere, you have to invent your own tool to calibrate them. I mean, again, we're living in this world where you literally have to spend several years of time messing with one device to be able to do one repair. And the only way that that is really viable is if you specialize in that one type of device. I would love to live in a world where it was easy to repair all different types of devices devices because we were not playing this stupid cat and mouse game with the manufacturer where we're dealing with people who are not being genuine and honest about why they're making the entire process more difficult by hiding access to calibration tools that would allow us to serve our customers. Unfortunately, that's not the world that we live in, but we are going to strive to live in that world. In the meantime, while we are striving to live in that world, we will do the best with what we got which means honoring the accomplishments and achievements of people like Steven when they are able to create tools like this that make life better for all of us. If you're interested in reading more about him or his tool, take a look at the link down below. And you can also find this tool available for sale at the links that I'm going to provide in the description of this video and also on the screen over here if I remember to put them in. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.